Greetings, traveler. We are gathered here today in ceremony to paint upon the demonic Primarch Angron. It's quite the bricky figure. What I want to say with sizable projects like this, with these larger models, it's an investment of time. Each single figure takes the amount of time it takes, right? The effort to paint one space marine. Well, when you have something this size, it's like 100 space marines. So just keep that in mind. I myself am finding myself, I'm hitting a bit of a wall with this. There are certain points in the process that mentally I'm done with, but you just have to keep going. So I would say, so I would say the best way to get through moments like that is with a good audiobook or a podcast and just sit down, work for an hour, take a little 10 minute break, work for another hour, you know, just really, you have to clock some time in there. Anyways, let's get on to the lesson. Um, audio is a little screwy in the first portion, but it clears up quickly. So I hope you have your sunglasses at home, because when you put them on, you will be seeing what I see. Let's get into it. To form the foundational color, I've just mixed together Imperial Navy Black and Dragon Red from the upcoming War Paints Fanatic range. Let's give me a nice murky purple base coat to begin from. So let me get that laid down and then we will crack on. And also before I get too far on the red, I have matte black and thunderstorm mixed up from the War Paints airline. I'll be catching all of the uh, wing flaps. Yes, technical term. I'll be catching all of those with a nice cold black. Okay, and with a couple coats of that in place, giving me a nice dark midnight blue, I've added a little bit of matte white to the equation, just bringing things up ever so slightly. Just keep your airbrush at the right angle. Keep in mind when these wings are finally attached to the model, they're going to be angled like so. But yeah, I think I can get by with just a few thin layers of this laid down. The rest of the highlighting can be taken care of with the brush. You can probably shade things maybe with the airbrush uniformly, but this will be good for now and I can get back to the red. Okay, base coats established for the next step as I begin my highlighting journey. I'll be adding some dragon red into that original base color. You can see the tone I have on my brush and I'll start separating and picking out these muscle islands just like so, and just, I'm not trying to leave too much of the shadow visible, just a little bit of that, that purple showing, you know, in the, in the deep down crevices. I'll get to the sharper and harder light later on, but for now, looking at things with a much wider lens. Just kind of establishing that first color up from the shadows, so don't need to uh, leave too much of that original base coat showing. And it's funny, a lot of this work that I'm doing, it's good for video, it will be covered by his armor. He's uh, very heavily armored, go figure, they want to keep him safe. I can also grab my base coat, my original base tone, on some of these larger areas it'll be much faster to just wet blend things together. Yeah, just like so, getting things established. This is going to be a long step, but I think you get the picture for now. I will have to carry this out across the rest of his muscular body. Here we go. Okay, stepping right along, not too bad. You can see some volumes coming into place in some areas. I mean, he's a very large model, so it's going to be a tough hill to climb. So let's focus on the face for now. I'll be taking some pure dragon red. It's a very textured area. His facial details are always most important. And I'm going a, a little more narrow with my highlights. Before I was, I was covering more of the 
broad surfaces, even on the face. I'm looking at the muzzle as just one piece. But now as I start to highlight, I'll be separating things a lot more, dialing into tighter points of light. making extra sure to pick out every fine edge right along the gums here, down this spiky goatee that he has going on. There's a lot of little textures to play upon, and I want to play upon them in many thin, diluted layers. Just ever so slightly bringing things along. Yeah, there's some larger planes, like on the side of his jaws. I just want that shadow to be tucking up underneath those heavily pronounced cheekbones, so it'll require a little bit of extra elbow grease, but that will be a much larger, broad gradient at this point. So I'm still going to cover about half of some of those large flat surfaces. I'll keep working along, but this is a very big step up, and I like that. Pulling away from the shadows quite considerably with this next tone, but I'll be able to play with the transparency. Get a nice variety of various dragon reds, depending on the transparency. So I'll keep working along on this. See me just slowly building up the textures. All right, we'll have a look back for the next step. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Look at that red face. This next step is going to be very gradual, and taking these gradual steps is a way that I can keep myself in check and make sure I do a very detailed job for the golden demon. So I'm applying another layer, much like the last layer, but this time shifting further up into pure red from the Fanatic range. Just adding these slightest of touches. You don't want to move too fast, just enjoy the process. Take your time laying the paints down, step up gradually. Now that I've gotten into these areas of extreme light, I want to start focusing on some much uh, sharper, kind of quicker progressions sharper line work. Yeah, you can see that's coming together nicely. You can see there are certain areas where I made sure to leave just a plain color. We were talking about the sides of his jaw before, the front of his chin, on a much smaller scale. It's a very similar story. But now I will start to pull a gradient on top of that, you know, wrapping the light up over his chin, tucking into his bottom lip. And I'll make sure to go and do back, do this a number of times, just to ensure the saturation, the attention to detail, every little wrinkle, leaving those dark areas alone. Okay, screaming for vengeance. I like where this is going. Getting back into the mixtures territory, I'm going to be taking some pure red, lava orange, and barren dune. It is Angron after all, so I want to bring in some heated highlights. Going into a near orange tone, but adding that barren dune to desaturate things slightly. So it's looking slightly fleshy, but if we miss, that's okay. All is chaos. And most of this is being applied just fine lines. It's a very gentle touch. Let's say that dots and slashes part in the process. Of course, that gives way to some areas. Like right in here, this needs a bit of a blend. It's still a somewhat broad surface. I'm sure the top of his chin could use a touch as well. 
just sweep that in there. But yeah, just a, a very short blend, very quick gradient. And I'll be sure to go through, again, make sure I'm, I'm adding three layers of that color so I get a nice saturated result. So I'll take a little time and then we will jump back for the next step in the process. All right, I have a good progression going, but before I step it up any further, I'm just going to take some red tone from the Army Painter, dilute that down just a very, very thin amount. You can see it on my thumb. Just going for a glaze-like consistency. Think of it as just unrolling a sheet of tint and fixing it to the window. Everything behind that window is just evenly tinted. I am not trying to get anything extra out of this wash. I'm just, you know, I don't want to need it to sink into the crevices. Everything is painted to the detail I would like. It's just a unifying glaze make everything a lot more harmonious. Okay, coming together nicely. Now to that last mixture, I'll be adding more Baron Dune, pulling things into the more of a flesh-like direction. And yes, I've also just laid a white base coat down on the eyes. Yeah, just very fine highlights here, pressing very, very gently. Each little part of the gums, some of these certain face horns, we can call them. Yeah, even on these small protruding rounded bits of uh, lip and or gum. I think he screamed his lips off. But even those little rounded pieces as they come out and away, I just want to catch the outermost facing edge of that. You can see me attempting to just gently press and missing as I'm slowly finding my way closer to the model. His hair fell off, that's okay. Even those you know, very small, shallow textures. I can try to add some dimension to that. So I have a lot of balancing to do at this stage, and I'll, I'll be taking my time. But here and there, as I'm working along, I'll also bring a small amount of white into that mixture. And yeah, best I can, just a tiny dot. No need to blend, I'm just capping off the, the sharpest points. There's a little dot on the top of the eyebrow, right here where they fold outwards, right on the tip. Yeah, such a small amount of paint on my brush, it's drying out on me. But I don't need to dilute it, just a thick amount of paint small dot, just like so. Yeah, that'll wrap it up on the skin. I have a lot more to paint on the rest of the model. Let's talk about these teeth and the tongue next. Okay, time to take care of some of those facial features. I'm going to move back in my progression. That second color I'd use to highlight the skin, I think that'll make a nice foundation for the tongue. Just a, a deep off red. Sort of stipple that in place to get a little tongue texture, some chaotic taste buds. And then I'll just slowly add amounts of Baron Dune to that. Give him this sort of plum color. I might want to wet blend some of the stippling. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'll have to play with that a little bit. Be the basis for the tongue. Let's go a little bit brighter. There we go. We're trying to pull just a little bit of a implied reflection to make it look slightly shiny. And then finally, adding just a small amount of white 
into that final highlight. I may not need more than three dots. Not too shabby. Let's also take that original base coat, kind of deep black purple. I'll dilute that down a little bit further than that. Okay, here we go. I've added a little bit of black to it. I'll take most of it off on my glove. Just kind of slide it towards the back of the tongue, try to catch some of that, the inside of the mouth. Just a thin glaze though, kind of blending back with that. And then finally, I'll come in with a dot of white. Perfect. All right, let's do a little dental work. Starting off from a base tone of black and Imperial Navy. Now to that, I've just added a small of, amount of white. Gives me a sort of a grayed out black blue. Yeah, black and white in there with just a touch of blue. That would be the first jump up for the teeth. And from there, I will just progressively add more amounts of white, very small amounts. In the upper set of teeth, I'll highlight towards the gums. On the lower side, I'll bring those reflections up towards the tips of the tooth, just like so. I'm pretty much edge highlighting here as well, just using the side of the brush, gently ride along that pronounced angle. Just a little lighter and brighter and whiter. Just a very, very small amount this time, and I'm trying to cover maybe the 10% of the surface area. So, in some spaces, it will just take the form of a tiny dot or slash. Lots of those going on as we get to these kind of final touches. I think that will be bright enough. I may want to balance things out later. I haven't used absolute white on any of these highlights yet. I like to save those for the, for the very final stages. When I'm painting a model up, just that extra little touch of control. Yeah, I think I can get away with just a nice saturated version of this, this final highlight for now. I'll be happy with that. Okay, and finally, the eyes. You know, originally just throwing down a white base coat is going to help these brighter colors that I want to use. It's going to help those along. Get a much more saturated version of this olive, much more saturated version of this lava orange, and that'll be my first color. Following that, I will jump up, just use. <clears throat> Following that, I'll kick things up with just a dot of demonic yellow. Oh yes, nice and bright. Then just adding a small amount of white into that demonic yellow. Ooh boy, holding my breath in between brush strokes. <laughs> Barely able to see, but we all know it's there. Just that final jump up, the brightest of yellow. To finish those eyes off, I think it's proper we give him some demonic style cat eyes. But I'll mix some of that original dragon red in with my black. You know, just keeping keeping everything on brand in the team colors. Even the pupils can have a slight touch of black, but they're man, they are hard to reach. Deeply submerged in the model's face, these beady little eyes. 
There we go, that's one, but looking in the wrong direction, I would say. Yeah, so, the old crossed eyes. I'm going to fix this off camera. You get the idea. And there you have it, the big red machine, the demon cane. I mean, the Primarch Angron. Again, a large figure. I have, to, I have to fumble around with it. It's going to take a while before I can actually assemble it, and then I'll have to sculpt over the gaps and paint over that. But the taller the mountain, the sweeter the breeze. I know I'll be very happy to have this model in my collection. You can see him assembled here. Uh, that's where he's going, but oh boy, every step is a big one. I find relief in knowing that the process speeds up as you continue on. You're covering less and less of the model, so there's less to worry about. Less is more! So thank you for watching this video. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to be kind. Also, if you want to be even kinder and a definitely cool person, check out my Patreon and support me there. I can't do it without all of those fine individuals. Until we meet again, remain unchained.